The Justice League are a group of superheroes who protect the world from any threats, such as alien invasion and supervillains. They're basically the DC version of the Avengers. Now, the Justice League has been around for decades in comics and has been adapted into a lot of video games over the years, and this video is going to look through all of the Justice League video games ever made. To be on this list, the game has to feature the Justice League, meaning it can't just feature one or two members of the Justice League, such as Batman or Superman. Though they are Justice League members, the game has to actually feature several members of the Justice League working as a team in the game's universe, in order to qualify as a Justice League game. So let's start. Justice League Task Force 1995 the first Justice League game was released on Mega Drive Genesis and Super NES and is a versus fighting game. This game starts with Darkseid attacking the Earth. The player then picks a Justice League member to play as and tracks down the other Justice League members for information, only to be attacked by them and discover that they are android duplicates. The hero then beats all of the Justice League members and eventually reaches Darkseid, and then they fight an android version of themselves. And after defeating the android version of themselves, the Justice League members are all saved. This game was not well seen by critics as the graphics and controls were terrible, especially when trying to use a combo, but it featured the Justice League including Batman, Aquaman, The Flash, Superman, Green Arrow and Wonder Woman. Next we have Justice League Injustice for All, released in 2002. The game was released on Game Boy Advance and it ties into the animated TV series Justice League, specifically the Injustice League story, which involves an alternate version of the normal DC universe that has evil versions of the Justice League that have essentially taken over the world. It's a pretty good episode, and the story of a version of the Justice League that turns evil is one that the Injustice video game series has used to good effect. The members featured in this game are Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, the Jon Stewart version, The Flash, Hawkgirl and the Martian Manhunter, all of which are playable characters. Justice League Chronicles, released in 2003. Another game that was based on the Justice League animated TV series and was released on Game Boy Advance. The game has three levels that feature two Justice League characters. The first is Dark Winter, in which The Flash and Green Lantern have to stop Killer Frost. The second is Trial in Ape City, and sees Gorilla Grodd using the Amazo android to frame the Justice League and features Batman and Hawkgirl. For those who don't know, the Amazo android can mimic the powers of metahumans, and it has all the powers of the Justice League members, hence how Gorilla Grodd is able to use it to frame the Justice League. And the third level is Savage Time, and sees history change so the Nazis win the Second World War, and has the playable characters Martian Manhunter, Superman and Wonder Woman, making it the only level with three characters. This level of the game lends heavily from the Justice League TV series, as the series has three episodes that show Vandal Savage going back in time to replace Hitler as the head of the Nazis and take over the world. Which is actually a pretty good idea for a video game, and it'd be great if they could take the idea and make a new video game out of it now. Justice League Heroes, released in 2006. This was a game released on Xbox, PS2, PlayStation Portable and Nintendo DC, where you played as two members of the Justice League at a time and was a single or two player game. It was an alright game, though the gameplay was a little simple and not very unique for each character, at least in my opinion. The Justice League members featured in this game were Zatanna, Mistress of Magic, Sean Jones, the shape-shifting Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, Galactic Law Enforcement Officer, Flash, the fastest man alive, Wonder Woman, Amazon Princess of Themyscira, the Dark Knight Detective, Batman, the Man of Steel, Superman. And the unlockable characters are Aquaman, Black Canary, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, the Hal Jordan and the Kyle Raynor versions, Hawkgirl, Huntress and Supergirl, meaning this game had the most playable Justice League members in a game to date. The game story was essentially Brainiac setting up different DC villains and sending them to attack people, as a diversion for him to steal the things he needs to achieve his master plan. Another Brainiac robot. But that one got away with the goods. He didn't take much. Just whatever was in these two. A DNA sample and that meteorite that landed in Utah last month. And the Justice League was of course stopping all the supervillains and then tracks down Brainiac, only to discover that the real villain was Darkseid all along, who was manipulating Brainiac to set him up with enough power to take over the Earth and then the rest of the universe. <laughs> Brainiac is no more. Trembled before the power of... Darkseid! Greetings, Superman. Get off my planet, monster! 
Normally, a threat from you is worth considering. But with both a mother box and a sensory matrix field generator at my command, I rather think you should get off my planet. Justice League Heroes The Flash, released in 2006 for the Game Boy Advance. This was a spin off game from the Justice League Heroes, and although you play as The Flash, many of the other members of the Justice League do feature, though for the most part only in small ways. There's not really much that can be said about this, it was just a normal spin off that had some few likeable moments to it. On the whole, not great, but on the whole, not that bad either. Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, released in 2008. This game was released on PS3 and Xbox 360 and is a fighting game. Now, when it comes to a video game like this, most people think Injustice Gods Among Us was the first DC version. But before that, there was Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Though it wasn't developed by Neverrealm, but instead developed by Midway Games. The story is quite simple. The two universes are merging into one, and if that happens, then everyone in both universes will die. So they need to stop it. Unfortunately, everyone is infected with rage, which makes them unable to do anything but fight. This is all your fault. You accused me. You helped Darkseid invade the Earth, remember? Fight! 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 Both of you calm down. You're being poisoned by the combat rage. Poisoned by what? The dark energies from the world merge. We can't fight among ourselves. Fighting releases the rage and returns their mind to normal, but it also hastens the merger of the two universes. The game actually isn't that bad. That being said, it's nowhere near as good as the current Injustice games. But to be fair, although the game is okay, it's not great, and if you played it now, it probably would feel very dated, especially after playing the Injustice games. But the game had an impressive list of characters you could play as, including Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and Captain Marvel, all featuring in the main story as well. This is actually the first Justice League game to feature Captain Marvel. And though many of the critics and fans hated this game, Neverrealm really should make a version of it called Mortal Kombat vs Injustice, because that game would be pretty awesome, especially if it was done right, which the Neverrealm guys could do. Justice League Heroes United, released in 2009. This game was an arcade game in the beat em up genre, and allowed up to four players to play at once. It's not that good a game really, it basically is just a standard beat em up game, but with a DC mod. DC Universe Online, released in 2011. This was an action combat MMO release on Microsoft Windows and PS3 in 2011, then on PS4 in 2013, and on Xbox One in 2016. The game was written by comic book writer Jeff Johns, and it allowed the player to create their own new superhero, and they could pick the gender, personality, and most importantly, superpower of this hero. Pretty much any superpower is up for grabs, including flight, super strength, manipulation of fire, manipulation of ice, mental powers, sorcery, and a lot of others. But basically, all the standard superhero powers are available. The story involves Lex Luthor traveling back from a future in which Brainiac has conquered the world. I've stolen Brainiac's exobytes and released them into Earth's atmosphere. They hold the powers stolen from the heroes and villains of my time and will bestow them on anyone they contact. The Exobites will create a new breed of superhuman to fight Brainiac's invasion. You must teach them to use their new abilities. He does this so the human race can defeat Brainiac and stop him from conquering the world, though there are a lot of other villains the hero fights as well along the way. The best thing about this game is the movie at the beginning that sees Luthor's team of supervillains vs the Justice League, and is one of the best DC animations of all time. The only downside is that this animated story is only at the beginning and then the animation style changes completely, which is usual for an MMO, but it would have been a fantastic game or even movie if the animation continued in this vein. And if you want to see the full clip, there is a link in this video's description. Justice League Earth's Final Defense, released in 2012. This game was released on Android and is an action game that features Batman, The Flash, Green Lantern, the Hal Jordan version, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman and Cyborg. The design springing straight from the pages of the new 52 comics, and though it's just an Android game, the design of the characters is quite impressive. The game itself is the rather simple combat of walking around and punching the enemy. The story is pretty non-existent, but basically the League just stops supervillains like Lex Luthor, who is looking for revenge for some previous battle that we don't actually see. It's simple, but not actually that bad a game on the whole. LEGO Batman 2, released in 2012. 
This game was released on all major platforms, including the Wii, the Wii U, Xbox 360, PS3, PlayStation Vita, Microsoft Windows, OS X, Nintendo DS, and Nintendo 3DS. Now in my opinion, LEGO Batman 2 was the best LEGO game made to date, and though the game is called LEGO Batman 2, it really should have just been called Justice League. Now, for most of the game, the Justice League don't actually show up, though Superman becomes a playable character about halfway through the game. The rest of the league all turn up right at the end of the game. The members featured are Batman, Superman, The Flash, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern, the Hal Jordan version. And all of them have their own unique superpowers that are the same ones they have in the comics. Which may not sound like much, but so far a lot of these games didn't actually feature any of these superheroes' superpowers, so it's really good to see them all having their comic book superpowers. The plot of the game has Lex Luthor and Joker team up, which sees Batman and Superman having to team up to beat them, and then eventually calling in the whole league to take them down. Pretty much every member of the Justice League ever can be played as an unlockable character, including Martian Manhunter who features in the game's cutscenes, though doesn't come along as a playable character in the main story. And the story of the game was actually so good that it was released as a straight to DVD animated movie. It's also the only LEGO game that I have ever got 100% completion on. As I said, it is my favourite, and if you're ill and can't leave the house for a few days, I fully recommend it. Injustice Gods Among Us, released in 2013. This was a fighting game released on Android, Microsoft Windows, PS3, PS4, PlayStation Vita, Wii U, and Xbox 360. The game story involves two alternate dimensions. In the main universe, the Justice League has actually dissolved into more of a militia, with Superman as a dictator and Batman trying to take him down and to do so he needs to transport Justice League members from another dimension to get a kryptonite weapon to take out Superman. A kryptonite weapon? You kill him, you're no better than he is. I didn't say kill. It'll incapacitate him, nothing more. The weapon's in the Batcave. I need your DNA to unlock it. The game has many playable characters from DC in it, but the main ones in the story mode are Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Aquaman, The Flash, and Captain Marvel. Although I probably should say Shazam since they've officially changed his name from Captain Marvel to Shazam. It's a fantastic game with a great story that's better than any DC live action film to date, though maybe the first Justice League movie will beat it, but truthfully I kinda doubt it will. Scribblenauts on Mars 2013 this game is a puzzle game that was released on PC, Wii U and Nintendo 3DS. It's a simple yet surprisingly fun game. It's the fifth in the Scribblenaut series and the game focuses on Maxwell and his twin sister Lily who always argue about which DC character would win the fight. So they travel to the DC universe to find out, then get trapped there and have to figure out a way home. And if you like the Scribblenauts other games then you'll love this one as it's pretty much the same game but with cameos from all the best DC comic book stars. Young Justice Legacy, released in 2013. This game is an RPG that was released on Microsoft Windows, OS X, Nintendo 3DS and Xbox 360. This game was a tie-in to the animated TV series Young Justice, and focuses mainly on the Young Justice team, which is made up of young heroes, most of whom are sidekicks to the Justice League members. And because of this, the Justice League does feature, though mainly in a mentoring capacity. To be honest, the game comes across as unfinished and rushed into production, as it's pretty terrible for the most part. The graphics look like the game was made a decade earlier, and the gameplay is a bit of a bam busher. But the story does have its good parts, such as a few pieces of interesting story about the Young Justice universe that doesn't feature in the TV series. So if you want to see Aquaman discovering his father is Black Manta, or watch the death of the girl he loves, Tula, Goodbye, my friends. then the cutscenes are worth watching just to fill in these story gaps. Though if that's all you want, then rather than buy the game, just check out the links in this video's description. The Justice League members are the same as the show, though the game mainly focuses on Batman, Superman, Green Lantern and Aquaman. Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham, released in 2014. This game is an action-adventure game that was released on Android, Microsoft Windows, OS X, PS3, PS4, PlayStation Vita, the Wii U, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. As I said, the second LEGO Batman game might as well have been called the LEGO Justice League game. But the third one, well, that was all about the Justice League. Batman is the focus at the start for a couple of levels, but for the rest of the game you follow the story of the rest of the Justice League, and play as all the other Justice League members. The game features nearly every Justice League member ever, but the story mainly revolves around the members Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, The Flash, and Cyborg. 
The game is pretty good, but it basically is a Lego game, and let's be honest, if you've played one, you've pretty much played them all. They don't change that much, there are a few updates every now and then, but you only need to play one every 5 years to really keep up to date. But playing the game is still fun, and the story of the game is pretty entertaining. Though a lot of critics slated it for having Kevin Smith and Conan O'Brien guest star for no reason. Or at least no reason in the game world. After all, in the real world, they're famous, and were obviously in the game to help promote and sell it. I took this part because my son found out that I had been made this offer and he said you're doing this. Next we have LEGO Dimensions DC Comet Packs that were released in 2015 and 2016. The LEGO Dimensions game wasn't actually about the Justice League, although Batman does feature as one of the lead characters. The main story of the game features nearly every character from every cult franchise ever, but the Justice League don't, as of yet, have their own story in the game which would be awesome incidentally and hopefully they'll do in the future. But for the moment the Justice League only feature as pack characters. But since the league is in the game and playable, this still counts as a Justice League game. Though with no real plot, as the characters essentially just complete puzzles, collect studs and collectibles and complete small tasks in the DC world. But it's still fun to play. Infinite Crisis, released in 2015. This game was a multiplayer online battle arena game that was released on Microsoft Windows. The release date was March 26, 2015, and then the game was shut down August 14, 2015, so it wasn't particularly popular. And as such, we're not going to spend much time on it. All you need to know is that it was a session playing game where you would pick a team and fight for 10 to 40 minutes. Critics were a bit mixed on the game, but ultimately most say that the game was just the same thing we'd seen before, but with DC characters as a mod, which may explain its short lifespan. DC Legends released 2016. This game was released on Android and is a strategy role-playing game. The story follows the comic event of Blackest Night, which is a Green Lantern based story about the Black Lantern Core of Death. It's up to the player to stop the Black Lanterns by selecting a group of champions and using strategy to lead them to victory. And it featured pretty much every villain and Justice League are worth mentioning, and the graphics to it were great considering it was on an Android. The gameplay was simple yet very engaging. All in all it was a pretty good game. Next we have the LEGO Dimensions again, this time for the LEGO Batman movie tie-in game, which was released in 2017. As I said, there's no main game in the LEGO Dimensions around the Justice League, but in the story pack that ties in with the LEGO Batman movie, the Justice League do briefly feature. So this counts enough to be in this video, though it's pretty much the same cameo that the Justice League has in the LEGO Batman movie. And the tie-in story is just a standard LEGO game, so you know what to expect with it. Justice League Action Run, released in 2017 and released on Android. This was a tie-in game to the animated series Justice League Action, which is actually a pretty good show. The game is very simple, it's a typical Android game that mainly has gameplay of tapping and swiping left and right. As the name suggests, the characters you choose to play as runs, and you collect objects, destroy objects and jump over things. There are also missions to accomplish, including boss battles, and it's not a bad game if you're on the train or something and need to kill some time. Injustice 2 released in 2017. This game is a fighting game that was released on Android, Microsoft Windows, Xbox 360, PS4 and Xbox One. Now most would consider this to be the greatest Justice League video game ever made, myself included, though hopefully the third Injustice game will be even better. The story is set in a world where the Justice League was split, as Superman turned into an evil dictator and Batman opposed him, with heroes rallying behind Evil One. So this basically ended the Justice League at this point. But in the ending of some of the characters, a Justice League team is featured. The job's demands require that I leave the Justice League in Barry's and Hal's hands. Together they're molding the younger heroes into a force for good, unlike any Earth has ever seen. Which is a very unique Justice League across games, comics, TV series and movies alike. And though the game doesn't feature a solid Justice League, I don't think it can really be argued that this isn't a Justice League game as all the members do feature. And lastly, we have Justice League Arcade. This is a game that was going to be for the Xbox 360, but was eventually cancelled before it was released. Though it actually doesn't look like that bad of a game at all. It may not be the best thing ever, but I've definitely seen worse. Though it has the same flaw to it that most of the bad games on this list do. They're not made as unique Justice League games. They don't have the abilities and powers of the DC superheroes. Instead, this game is just a generic beat-em-up that has been given a Justice League mod which is probably part of the reason the game failed before it was even released. But if you would like to see more of the game, a link to a YouTuber's playthrough is in this video's description. 
and that is every version of the Justice League in video games. Personally, I think the best game series was the Injustice game series, but what was your favourite Justice League game? And are there any other games that you think should be on this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.